now we will talk about next question. So, next question is question number 6 ok. So, what is this question is about? This question is all about name the scale on which the destructive energy of an earthquake is measured. An earthquake measures 3 on this scale ok. Would it be recorded by a seismograph? Is it likely to cause much damage? So, many questions are given in one question only. See again I will read the question name the scale on which the destructive energy of an earthquake is measured. So, what is that scale known as it is Richter scale is not it. So, here the first part of the question is name the scale on which the destructive energy of an earthquake is measured. So, it is what it is Richter scale. Now, the second part of this same question is an earthquake measures 3 on this scale would it be recorded by a seismograph. So, actually you know children uh, if we talk about seismograph if the seismograph is uh, quite um, sensitive it is going to measure actually more than uh, if the Richter scales measure more than 2 the reading is more than 2 then also a sensitive seismograph will be showing the reading ok. So, this is the part second and part second answer. Now, third part of the same question is is it likely to cause much damage ok. So, uh, is it likely to cause much damage children actually if the reading exceeds you know if the reading is more than uh, 6 you know then there are chances or not chances I should say then the earthquake is of destructive nature or else you know sometimes I told uh, while teaching this chapter also that we wo like many a times we do not even realize that earthquake has come why because the intensity is quite low ok. But when the scale shows uh, when the reading is around 6 then if the area is very crowded population is very high then it becomes little dangerous. But yeah obviously if it is more like you know uh, if it is more than 7 7.5 7 then it is really destructive and uh, the earthquake which we had in Bhuj ok the intensity was around 7.5 and you know I do not have to uh, know tell about the destruction the destruction the amount of destruction you all are quite aware of is not it. So, uh, let us talk about the complete question now that what is the scale to measure the earthquake. So, it is Richter scale will seismograph will show the reading if the reading is 3. See so, uh, how it can be answered you know all the seismograph would not be measuring it by the very sensitive scale the very sensitive seismograph those uh, seismograph will be showing the reading right from uh, even if it is 2 ok. And the earthquake is not dangerous or destructive if uh, Richter scales gives the reading around uh, 4 to 5. But if it is 6 and if the area is quite highly populated then what is happening then it is quite then the earthquake becomes quite destructive and definitely the earthquake is more disastrous when it when the reading goes above uh, about you know about or around 7 and higher. Actually on the higher scale the, 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 like there is nothing which can be told like it is fixed uh, earthquake cannot have intensity more than this. But theoretically even we have considered this as 9 ok. So, this was about the question number 6 I will write the answer answer number 6. So, uh, name the scale on which the destructive energy of an earthquake is measured. So, the which energy the destructive energy is measured on. Richter scale ok it will be 
what is the next pattern um, would it be recorded ok so it will be recorded by the sensitive uh, what they have asked this only na? yes so will it be recorded by the seismograph so yes it will be recorded by very sensitive seismographs and what is the next part is it likely to cause much damage so uh, no it it won't be it won't be destructive ok and then we will write over here if the Richter scale shows reading between or you know even this much is quite enough. So, what is the thing the destructive energy is measured on the Richter scale ok the this energy is measured by which scale ch uh, children it is measured by Richter scale ok. Now, it will be recorded by the sensitive this word is very very important children it will be recorded by the sensitive seismograph it will be recorded by the sensitive seismograph no it will not be destructive that means if the reading is 3 ok that means the intensity is very low and so it will not be destructive. Now, if the Richter scale shows reading higher then 7 then it becomes more dangerous and destructive ok and even if uh, the crowded area the area is very crowded it is highly populated then even if the reading is less than uh, 7 even at the uh, if the richness scale shows if goes uh, to the reading of 6 then also it will be very very destructive because the number of the people because the population uh, if, if the population is high that means that particular area where the earthquake is uh, experienced then the number of people are more and so more destruction will be there ok. So, this was our question number 6 and in question number 6 only 3 questions were given ok. So, how it is measured it is measured on Richter scale then next part was what that will it be measured by seismograph. So, a sensitive seismograph will be measuring this kind of earthquakes also. Now, the third point was children that uh, what was the third point actually ok will it be destructive. So, it would not be destructive, but if the reading is more than 6 or uh, you know exactly I, I should say the 7, 7.5 this one is very very destructive, but the 6 the if the if the reading is around 6 then it can be very very destructive if the area is highly populated ok. So, this was about question number 6 now we will talk about question number 7. So, what is question number 7 now suggest 3 measures to protect ourselves from lightning ok suggest 3 measures to protect ourselves from lightning ok. So, what are the 3 measures children see first of all uh, what should we do first of all if we are uh, standing under a, a tall building trees we should move from there is not it that means we should avoid tall buildings and tall uh, trees we should not be there. Second point can be like uh, we should not uh, take bath or should not touch the electric gadgets is not it. 
uh, even the television uh, can be turned off. So this is the second point. Third point can be what? Like shouldn't uh, we shouldn't uh, actually we should be at home that time. We should be at home that means intentionally we should not move out to see the lightning. As I discussed this thing while teaching the chapter also that uh, if lightning is there you know some student have an more curious, they are more curious, they want to go to the terrace and want to see oh what is happening, how it is. So shouldn't, uh, one should not do that, it should be avoided, isn't it? And again the umbrella shouldn't be carry, we shouldn't carry umbrellas. Why we shouldn't carry umbrella? Because we actually, it umbrellas like when we talk about the handle, it is what? Metal, metals are good conductors and so again a chances or uh, are more that we can even become the victim of the lightning. So, even the umbrellas has to be avoided, okay. So, what are the steps or what are the things which we should keep in our mind during lightning? First of all, we should always avoid to be under the tall trees, tall buildings first, then we should not, uh, uh, you know, intentionally we should not go out of the house and we should not carry umbrellas, then we should not take bath at that time, we should not uh, uh, you know switch on the electric gadgets, okay. So all these points has to be there in our mind uh, when there is heavy lightning, okay. So now we will talk about answer number 7, okay. I have done over there question, so question obviously I won't write, I will write here answer number 7. Let me read the question again. Okay, suggest three measures to protect ourselves from lightning. Okay, so do not stand under the tall buildings and trees okay should not take bath should not touch electric appliances and if you are sitting in a vehicle then you should close that suppose you are sitting in a car so you should close the doors and the, uh, the glass should be up isn't it. So but we have to write only 3 children, 3 are already done so we do not have to write more ok. And we have discussed many points when uh, this chapter was discussed during discussion of this chapter. I have told many points, I have discussed many points. So I do not think so that this will be an issue and three points we have written over here, okay. So now we will move to the next question and before moving to the next question, what was this question? Question number 7th was written that what, uh, what was the question? suggest three measures to protect ourselves from lightning. So unnecessarily we should not go out, even if we are going out we should not carry umbrella with us as it is good conductor and good conductor will means what? It, it is a good conductor, it will pass what? Uh, the electric, the current, the lightning, isn't it? Okay, then we should not stand under the tall trees, tall buildings, we should not touch electric appliances, okay. So, all these things we need to keep in our mind now, okay. So, now next question is question number 8. So, obviously I will write answer number 8, okay. So, the question number 8 is explain why a charged balloon is repelled by another charged balloon whereas an uncharged balloon is attracted by another charged balloon. Again I will repeat the question, explain why a charged balloon is repelled by another charged balloon. That means what they are saying, whereas an un uncharged 
balloon is attracted by another charged balloon. What charge and charge, charge and charge, isn't it? Okay. So in the simple language, see what is the question, children? If two charged balloons are there, okay. If two balloons are there and both the balloons are charged, they will repel each other. Okay. But if one balloon is charged and one balloon is uncharged, then they will attract each other. Okay. So why is it so? First of all, need to understand the question. What is the question about? In the question, they have asked that if two balloons are taken, okay, two balloons are taken and both these balloons are charged, so they will repel each other. But if one balloon is charged and the other another balloon is uncharged, okay, then they attract each other. So children, we have studied now that if we talk about the two, two, <laughs> not two, it is two, okay. So when we talk about the two charged balloons, so children, same charge will be there, okay. And see, because we have studied this thing previously also, before also that same charges are going to repel each other, isn't it? So if the two, two balloons are charged, it is too much of charge and uncharged, you know. Okay, so if two balloons are charged, they are going to repel each other because both will be carrying the same charges and same charge will be repelling each other, isn't it? Okay, so this was the first case. Now in the second case children, if one balloon is charged and the another is uncharged, so we know that, that a charged body has a potential to attract and uh, means a body where on which there is no charge. Okay, so a charged body will attract an uncharged body. That is the reason two, again I have to say two. So two charged balloons will repel each other, but one charge and one uncharged balloon will attract each other. Isn't it? Uh, want to move out from this question, too much of charge. Okay, so I won't read the question now, but I will simplify the question in simple words that if two balloons are taken and both the balloons are charged, they are they will be repelling each other. Why? Because both the balloons have got same charge. Okay. Now, so another part, if one balloon is charged and another is uncharged, they will be attracting because we know a charged body will attract an uncharged body. Okay. So let's write this. Okay. So I'll, I'll have to read the question. <laughs> Okay, explain why a charged balloon is repelled by another charged balloon, whereas an uncharged balloon is attracted by another charged balloon. Okay, so two charged balloon when brought, I don't think so, will be able to you know, write in this part, but still brought together they will repel each other as both will develop same charge okay and same charge will always repel each other okay now second part if an uncharged balloon is brought near charged balloon, they will attract each other as 
charged body or on each other as charged body I am not able to write but still a charged body can attract uncharged one. Okay. So, two charged balloons when brought together they will repel each other as both will develop same charge, isn't it? Both the balloons will have same charge and we know that the same charges are going to repel each other and so definitely these balloons are going to repel each other. Now, if an uncharged balloon is brought uh, near charged balloon, they will attract each other as charged body can attract the uncharged body. Okay? If the body does not have any charge, then it will get attracted towards any charged body. Okay? So, this charge horrible question, why horrible because too much you know again again charge and uncharge. So, question number 8 is over children. Now, we will proceed to the next question. So, please note this down and then I will discuss the next question which will be question number 9. Okay? Now, we will talk about next question children and the next question is question number 9. Yes, ninth. Okay. So, the question is described with the help of a diagram an instrument which can be used to detect a charged body. I will repeat the question. Describe with the help of a diagram an instrument which can be used to detect a charged body. So, that means what we have to do? We have to discuss about what? We have to draw the diagram of an electroscope and we have to write about that. So, I do not think so that I have to do this because it is already done in the lecture diagram is also done and even the explanation is also done and not only of one type that means the we have discussed the electroscope which is uh, you know usually present in the laboratory and um, at the same time we have also discussed the electroscope which we can prepare at our own places own house is not it which we can make. So, I do not think so that the same thing it will be exactly same that there is any kind of need to discuss this question again and to draw and to write the answer and draw the diagram. Okay? So, it is exactly what is asked in the question it is done exactly in the one of the uh, lecture. Okay? So, now we will talk about question number 10 children. Now, what is question number 10? Question number 10 is list Three states in India where earthquakes are more likely to strike. Again, I read it. List three states in India where earthquakes are more likely to strike. Okay. So three places can be Jammu and Kashmir. Okay, we know that. Okay, and Gujarat. This is answer number which children? This is answer number tenth. So. Jammu and Kashmir okay stays there was so obviously Gujarat and Assam okay so uh, they have asked about the states where in India okay they have asked about the states in India where earthquake uh, are more likely to strike. So, it can be Jammu and Kashmir, Assam and Gujarat, is not it? So, nothing to discuss more about this question and uh, this was our question number 10 children. Now, we will talk about the next question and probably I think so this is the last question, no one more is there. Okay, so, now we will talk about the second last question that is question number 11 and so, I will not write over here question, I will write answer answer number 11. Okay. So, suppose you are outside your home and an earthquake strikes, what precaution would you take to protect, protect yourself? What is the question children? Suppose you are outside your home and an earthquake strikes, what precaution would you like to protect yourself? Okay. Simple, what is asked? 
protection which you will you will be taking during an earthquake obviously and they have given a condition also that you are out, out of your house you are not there in the house okay when we are there in the house and what we have to do we have to be away from you know the hangings the heavy hangings and we should cover ourselves under the table or some strong you know maybe the bed and something like that we should not um, touch the electric appliances we should be away from them okay but now they have given the condition over your children that if you are not in your house and you are out of your house obviously children we should not stand again under the tall buildings tall trees because due to earthquake they may fall or some part of that you know maybe building or tree may fall on you so we should be away from tall buildings and tall trees first thing then what is the second thing if uh, you are there in the vehicle okay and you feel that earthquake is uh, has strike uh, then what you will do children either uh, you should you know should come out of that and try to move uh, towards the open area instead of being in very highly crowded area but they shouldn't be there while the earthquake is going on you know in the, that process only okay so if you feel if you feel that it you know that uh, a slightest jerk you have you have felt and you think that it can uh, strike the intensity can increase in that condition you should try to come out and should go in some open area isn't it okay now what is the next point children that when the earthquake come and you are uh, under the uh, you are out of the house uh, very common children we should not touch any kind of electrical wires cables that uh, you know the electric poles obviously in general also we do not do so isn't it we always try to be away from that but the meaning is that we should not stand under that pole also okay where the heavy wiring is being uh, the heavy wiring you can see if the wiring is there so you should avoid that place also okay so what is the question children the question is what you will do if an earthquake strikes when you are out of the house so we have to write one or two or points so children what you will write that should not stand under the tall trees and buildings okay should try to move in an open area should not touch or stand under the electric poles okay so these are the three things which we should do okay so this was our question number 11 what has to be done if earthquake strikes and you are out of the house so obviously you should not move under the tall buildings and tall towers or trees because you may be you know you may get any kind of injury okay then again we should try to move uh, towards open area and again we should not stand or touch any kind of electric wires or poles or any uh, thing related to electricity isn't it so this was our uh, 11th questions answer now we'll talk about the next question and this is probably yeah this one is the last answer of this question so this is answer number 12th the weather department has predicted that a thunderstorm is likely to occur on a certain day suppose you had to go out on that day 
would you carry an umbrella oh just now we have discussed and discussing one of the answer isn't it so um, i'll read it again children the weather department has predicted that there can be a thunderstorm is a like it is likely to occur okay suppose you have to go out so in this condition uh, will you carry your umbrella with you okay just now we have discussed children that we will not carry umbrella as umbrella uh, is made up of you know that handle totally metal is there and as metals are good conductor so we can uh, get shock or something like that you know so it should be avoided isn't it so this is the last answer why we should uh, uh, avoid umbrella because it is made up of metal and metals are good conductors of electricity so any mishapping can take place isn't it so no we should not carry an umbrella with us as it is made up of metal okay in bracket i will also write handle so any miss happening can take place okay so what can be the miss happening children what can be the thing okay so what can be the miss happening what can happen so as metals are good conductors of electricity okay as metals are good conductors of electricity the person may get shock okay so that you know uh, shock can be there or like you know jerk can be there so uh, and the lightning will obviously it will travel to the metal so that is the reason this umbrella should be avoided okay so this was the last answer of this chapter with this answer this chapter is completely over hope you understood the chapter very well and you will be able to solve various questions from various books okay thank you